for round two. Of course, tomorrow's games, there is a Sunday game between Subiaco and Peel Thunder. And of course, this evening, it'll be West Perth who will take on the Perth Demons. That'll kick off four o'clock local time here in the West. Another game that's going on in unison with the Royals and Swan Districts is Claremont and East Fremantle. Claremont looking to win down there on their home deck. East Fremantle after being defeated by Pill Thunder last week. Be looking to rebound and get the four points. Just waiting for both sides to settle into position. Of course, this is the Waffle Wonderland. New concept. The Waffle has adopted. It was fantastic last week. And the Royals, of course, hosting it today at Leaderville Oval. East Perth will be kicking to the southern end of the ground, the Vincent Street end of the ground. Of course, we've mentioned Scott Jones, the importance of him in the centre of the ground. Hamish Brayshaw will start in there for East Perth. He's an important in. And of course, Doc Blakely, Nathan Blakely for Swans, will be vital for Swan District. So away they go. You blink and it's round two. Brayshaw, was he taken high? Scraps the ball to half forward. Got an effective possession. The Swans will rebound. They'll go from half back. The kick was nicely settled. And the mark taken at half back there by Cartwright. So Cartwright by hand to Reedy. Reedy up against the boundary. Turnover came to Van Diemen. Went in board. Hand pass came from north. Back in board now to Crowden, the former docker. High ball. Ball at half forward. Going back with a flight. I think it'll be a free kick there to Tony Knott, the veteran. And Swan Districts were lucky there because East Perth had plenty of names that were streaming out of half back. In the hands there of Chelcraft. The Swans just look to negotiate. Ursek, who's at half back, starting at full back, and is back in the side, goes with a loping left foot kick. And he kicks out player there in Clark. Clark, another left foot kick. Prominent too, beautiful, travelled about 45 metres and lands on the chest there of Cartwright. So an early opposition here. The Swans to go inside 50. The kick wasn't the best, just sat on the head there of their key forward in Lee Coleman, who's kicked 6-2 last week. And Coleman will have an early opportunity to go back. The advantage has been paid though for Swan Districts and they are on the board this afternoon. The goal kicking through the agency there of Jackson McLaughlin. Kicked three goals last week for Swans. And the Ducks are on the board. Early stages. An issue with the scoreboard over there, the electronic scoreboard. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But the main thing for the Swans is their first inside 50 has benefited with a goal. The Royals were left uh, napping at half back. So, good signs early for Swans. East Perth's entry inside 50 was wasteful. Like the move too of Pina, just starting on that wing position. Blakely tried to take possession. Swans through Rokar. Over the head there of Pina, but just the numbers with Swans has probably been the most startling thing so far. Picked up there by Shellcraft. Good ball. Went to half forward. Picked up by Brayshaw. East Perth should be able to rebound. Came off the hands there of Schumacher. They've mucked around with it again, the Royals. Can East Perth regather? Hair pass there from Clark. Closing on goal here is Edwards. That's Thomas Edwards. Again, outnumbered at the feet of the ball. Royals should be able to nurse this through for a behind, and they do so. Uh, East Perth looking vulnerable in defence. Ball back in the hands there of Stanley Wright at full back. Swans are ringing the changes. Cipro on for Swan Districts. Wright has to get it right, no pun intended. Goes in board and get it back. Clearing kick from the defensive 50. And a very good mark, a solid mark taken on the other side there by Schofield. Liked his game last week. Has some options inside to Schofield. One of those is Wilcox. Chooses to go to the bigger option there in Jones, who pulled down the mark. Umpire, has he called play on? He has. Thought it might have been a mark there to Jones. Had enough of a bite at it. 
Picked up there by Hill, who was named at full forward. A long way from that position. Goes with a long ball, searching kick. And crashing into the post there was Tom North. I hope he's all right. Certainly wore a fair bit of that. And the nature of football, away we go from full back. Very quickly repelled. Turner with the ball. The skipper. Good contest. East Perth have the numbers through Wilcox to Brayshaw. Hamish Brayshaw goes with the right foot. Searching kick again, but it's poor and it'll be cut off very easily in defence. Bassini, who switches wide to Ursig, who lopes after this, will need some support. East Perth have the numbers. The pressure applied there by Shellcraft. Somehow they get it back. Swans will just settle things on the outside of the ground at halfback. It's in the hands of Turner, who looks to play on. Disposal has let down both sides across half forward in this wing position. Another turnover, and the Royals are away. If they're clean, North. Nice little cute delivery there. Onto the chest there of Wright. Wright at his kick. Got it spot on. And finds Tom Medhat. He's at right half forward. Swan Districts, early stages, the first quarter, they lead 1-1-7. The Royals can tie things up if they can float this through. Tom Medhat, all the way from Sorrento, Duncraig, in the north of Perth. Settles with his kick. Works it back, works it back beautifully and salutes the local crowd. Plenty of encouragement on the kick. It's all about the finish, and he did finish the job. The Royals square it up here at Leader Malibu. Early stages, tick under six minutes play, 1-1-7 apiece. Early statement from Medhat. The movement was a lot better from East Perth. The likes of Brayshaw are involved, which would be encouraging for the Royals. And Swans a little bit wasteful when they went forward. All back in the middle of the ground. Plenty of noise here at East Perth, of course. Waffle Wonderland, as I mentioned. Another clearance here for East Perth. It's going to come through north. Goes on the left foot. Probing kick up to the half forward line. Hammered back. Swans will look to clear through Cipro. Cipro finds Turner. The ball will end up at half back just for the moment. And it's through Hewitt. Hewitt comes back in board. Mucks around with it. Kick eventually ends up there with Bassini. Bassini goes back in board. He picks out Jesse Turner, who must have had six or seven touches. Turner has players on the outer side. One of those was Reedy, who just handballed it into space. Lucky enough to get it back. The Royals have done all right here just to get numbers around the footy. Crowden. Hand pass was interesting. Found Hilly. Inside 50. Now there was a late bump on Hilly, and that'll mean it'll be down the ground for the Royals. So, lack of discipline there from Swans. They had it covered. Plenty of numbers. And it'll go back. It looks to me like it'll be crowded. The former docker. Shocking delivery inside 50. Certainly gave the opportunity there for Bassini to get in front for Swans, tie things up. And we'll have a ball up at left half forward. 52 metres around from East Perth's goal. 1-1-7 one, one, apiece. Kick out of the pack. Came off the boot there of Sturrock. Good luck in getting a clean possession out of this. East Perth pressing, they have numbers, just kick off the ground at least. It was in the hands there for just a moment there for Tedesco. Wasn't clean enough, the Swans in defence were, and they'll get a ball up six metres out directly in front. Huge amount of numbers around this football. 
unlikely ruckman there was Hill. Turner gets the hand pass out, scrappy kick. It sits out here for Wilcox, who'll be in business. Wilcox with a hand pass, comes back in board, finds McCready. It was brilliant last week at Sanaf back. He goes back in board and finds Crowder. Second disposal. Inside the space of a couple of minutes. His last kick that went inside 50 was a shocker. Still doesn't look confident, rightfully so, from 55. So probably put it to the teeth of the goal square. Gives it a whack, though. And kicks the goal. Bit of humble pie to go eat. As Crowder makes the distance very easily. And another goal to the Royals against the grain. Crowden, what a finish. Royals out to 2 1 13. Swans 1 1 7. Tick under 9 and 3 quarter minutes played. First term, you're at Leaderville Oval. Saturday afternoon, our broadcast coming to you live through the AFL app, of course, afl.com.au. Dan Hobley in the hot seat this afternoon. It's a privilege to bring you the action. Score update, full time, of course, at Mineral Resources Oval this afternoon. It was South Fremantle 22 11 over the West Coast Eagles reserve side 8 7 55. And the Sharks have made a big start against Claremont. They lead four straight to the home side there in the Tigers, one behind. East Perth they have the ball at half forward in the hands there of Tedesco. Beautiful low ball. And onto the chest there of Rakos. East Perth again just lowering the eyes. That's what made that look so attractive as they brought the ball inside 50. Off the back of a crowd and goal, Rakos is approached very close to the man on the mark. We'll wait on the result there. Home crowd will tell you the story. Royals are on a roll. Two in a row, and all of a sudden, East Perth have settled. They go to 3 1 19. Swan Districts are in the headlights 1 1 7. 12 point buffer to the Royals. Tick over 11 minutes played. Waffle football round two. This game, though, should be a cracker. You would sense at Swan Districts at some stage will mount a comeback. Obviously early stages first term, but they're getting smashed in the middle of the ground. That's the first place they'll need to address. And they're also getting a touch up. Boy, East Perth Ruckman there and Scott Jones has just carried it on from last week. That has been very, very impressive. Of course, Jones last week, 32 hit outs. There's another one. Into the path there of North. Gave it back to the man in question there and Jones, just riding his own football. Almost a mark taken in defence. Falls to ground. Chance here for the Royals should be easy enough. Well, hatless there from the Swans. Tedesco drives the knife through the heart. Tony Knott flew in defence, had no support. And Tedesco cleaned it up at aisle six and banged it through. Not panic stations for Swans, but they need an inside 50. Always hard up against the best ruckman in the comp, other than Ollie Eastland from Claremont. You've got to remember, there's some aging legs there for Nathan Blakely. Can't do it all by himself. And this midfield of the Swans has to get busy. Cipro's gone in there. That's better there from Blakely, but again, should be a free kick to Swansea, would have thought. It was no real clean possession. Eventually it comes there to Pina, who's gone from a wing into the middle of the ground. Bounces off the chest there at Sanaa Ford from Hewitt. Throw a blanket on about seven or eight players. Umpire in green will come in, will ball it up. Just at the edge of the square. Northern end of the ground. Little throw up. I don't like that. Just throw it up at a decent height. They are men playing out there. Swans have some time in defence. Horrible hand pass there from Knott. 
Cleaned up nicely there by Pacini, who goes wide, and possession has been soaked up there by Bryce Watson. Watson kicks questionable. Puts it in the path there as Cipro. It was good enough to give off the hand pass. Hung around for a little bit. We'll get it back. Goes to Blakely. Blakely with a scrappy kick inside the forward line, and the mark's been taken. Swans have an opportunity to circulate through that 50 to find a target. And Cartwright is the recipient of some clean footy and must go back and kick a goal. Cartwright, in the first five minutes, was dominant across the centre wing, broadcast side of the ground, and across right half forward. Haven't heard from him in the last five minutes. Has bobbed up, though. Should be a soda from 25. Aiden Cartwright, right foot, never looked like missing. Bangs it through. Response came in the agency there of some better ball movement. Nathan Blakely was involved. Cartwright finished. 15 minutes gone. East Perth still lead though. 4 1 25, Swans 2 1 13. The buffer is 12 points for East Perth. That's something to work with for Swans. I don't think it's going to be one of those days where the ball's ripped out of the guts and sent long to Lee Coleman and he kicks his five or six. It's going to take some thought the way that the ball is nursed into this forward line. And they're probably going to have to think about getting Lee Coleman out of that goal square. Push him up to half forward. It's working beautifully for the Royals to have him away from the footy. And those deep entries have usually had two or three blokes on him when they've all flew. Ball back in the middle. Blakely fights hard. Gets a kick forward. Back with the flight. It was right. Throw almost. Watering through there was Medhat. Eventually comes out there to Clark. Clark and inside 50. Goes with a left. Vacant goal square. How's that for a goal? Easy as you like. Clean swing. Swung it through with the left. And the sun starting to shine for Swans, who really against the grain and through the hard work of Blakely, who's got busy in the middle of the ground. And the Swans respond with their third. They're 3-1-19, East Perth 4-1-25. Game on. 16 minutes played, first term. You with Dan Hobley. Our broadcast, of course, coming live to you through the AFL app, afl.com.au. Brilliant running goal there from Clark. So we're keeping on that ruck rule in the middle. Crowden gets another possession. Puts it out the path there of Schumacher. You're not going to remember or disclose that name too much. Opportunity again for East Menor. Here's Brayshaw. Should settle from 35. Really had no opportunity to straighten up. So it was always going to be tug left. And Bryce Watson nervously wandered the ball through for a behind. Ball back. Bassini, terrible ball. This should be a turnover. Should result in the goal. Brayshaw goes with the banana. Check side. Call it what you like. Should have done better than that. So East Perth. There's two opportunities in the space of 30 seconds. Brayshaw will be shaking his head. East Perth should at least have five goals. Ball at half back. Shellcraft. Swans with the ball at half back. Finds Rokar. Who's on the chalk. On the eastern, eastern wing. Between half back and the eastern wing, I should say. Rokar just wants to nurse it down the line. Good mark defensively taken. Looks to me like that might be Watts. So Watts at half back. Watson for Swans and Watts for East Perth. A commentator's dream. Lands on the chest there. The broad shoulders there of Crowd. A beautiful kick. Searching kick used his experience. And Tom Medhat takes the mark in between that left forward pocket, left half forward. Looks like he's going to go back and shoot for goal. He'll probably have to carry 40 metres in the journey. 
named on the bench, which I thought was an unusual move. Medhat. Settled approach, little skip. Kicks on its way. Clapped it through. He likes it. And so do his teammates, East Perth. Get a late one in the scheme of things. 5-3-33. Swan Districts have their runner two goals broken. 3-1-19. That lead back out to 14 points for the Royals. And they gain the game, say to the Swans, catch us if you can. The Swans again, defensively, just got a little bit opened up. Crowd and certainly a class player through the middle of the ground. Hasn't necessarily had a hard matchup in the middle of the ground. If you're the Swans coach, you'd probably want to send someone over just to at least stand on him at the front of the contest, but the modern game can do that to you sometimes. Cipro's gone to stand next to Crowder now. Jones resumes the dominance. A little clever tap out to the park there of Schumacher. Throws it onto the left boot. High ball. Opportunity there for Schofield. Schofield good enough to be clean. Bring it back inside. It was deflected though. Swan's got on the right of that. Nice little pick up there from Shellcraft. Puts it into the path there of Smith. If it settles for him, he'll be away by himself. Should be able to nurse the ball up to the half forward line. Keeps it in there for the Swans. You don't mind. Comes to Edwards, who was dumped. Here's an opportunity for Perth, though. Reedy circling. He's dispossessed. East Perth just looking to get the ball out there as quick as possible. Crowden has his troubles. Both sides starting to tire. Late in the quarter. Eventually, Swans work it back and a mark inside 50. And it ends up there in the hands of Edwards. A little bit of fatigue starting to creep in for both sides. Edwards. Been more than handy this quarter. Now, the last couple been sold into some false security and said that the distance could be some trouble. So we'll back Edwards from here. He'll kick from 55. Kick on its way. Should be touched on the line. Is there a mark? We'll wait on the umpire's decision. Good to see the goal umpire make a call on that. Through for a behind. Kick out from fullback. Tom North. Marks in the back pocket. So the Royals just looking to soak up some time. Keep hold of their 13-point lead. In the hands here of Wilcox. And they go to half back. And it's in the hands now of Angus Scott. Scott goes wide to Stanley Wright. Wright with a booming left foot kick. Jones floating back with the pack. Couldn't take the mark. The Swan should be able to rebound here. This will be dangerous. Shellcraft, another possession. Goes to Turner. Turner with his kick. Guess who? And Edwards again on the burst. Been part of the chain of the last three or four possessions. Oh, the kick though. A gift. Back in board and then picked off there by the ruck there in Jones. Jones off lays. The Royals with their questions to solve out the outer side of the ground. Raycos was brought to ground. Still an opportunity there for Pina. Swans with more numbers than they know what to do with. Shellcraft again by hand to Rokar. Rokar into the path there at Turner. Now the skipper, if it sits, he is in business. Could have a cup of tea. Plenty of space goes to Edwards. Was there a shove in the back? The umpire has said yes. Don't think there was a great deal in that. What I've seen Edwards, as most leading forwards these days, tend to do, take a few drama classes one day a week. But Edwards, you would suggest, will look to go back, put some scoreboard pressure on. Probably lucky to pick up that free kick. Certainly been a target, though, the whole time, has Edwards. 
So back on the goal line, what do they have? Some taller timber down there and Evan Smith who's rotated through the ruck. Edwards the left footer. Didn't get a great piece of that. Kept it pretty low and it snuck through for a behind only just. So scraping through a behind. 3-3-21. Three, three, Lead is trimmed back to 12 points. East Perth still in charge. 5-3-33. Three, three, three. Tick under 24 minutes played first quarter. Awful football round two. On the AFL app, of course, with Dan Hobley. Great to have your company. Swans can go back inside 50. Came off the boot there of McLaughlin. Kicked three goals last week. Flying over the top, there is Coleman. Probably the first ball of the cherry that he's had for the game. It's a tough ball to mark too. It was off the outstep. Had to jump over two Royals defenders and took it clean. Coleman, 6-2 last week against West Coast. Was dominant. Picked up the 11 disposals. Eight marks on the approach. That's how a key four bangs them through. Coleman kicks his first. Swans go to 4-3-27, a late one. And East Perth, 5-3-33. It's game on. Six points of difference late in the first term. Waffle football round two. Royals start to ring the changes. Crowder will come back on for the last few minutes. Schumacher goes to the bench. But encouraging signs there for Swans. They have Edwards, who's been brilliant across half forward. McLaughlin's been another good player. And Coleman coming to the party. He'll suggest if Swans are a chance today, he'll have to kick his three or four. All back in the middle of the ground. The old fray there in Jones. Of course, Doc Blakely, who will get this hand pass. Swans muck around with it in the middle of the ground. Haven't been as clean as they would have liked. They're going to win a free kick here, the Royals. Taking it half back in the hands there of Scott. Had a quiet start. Scott, now getting a little player. Little 25 metre chip. Oh, East Perth had two players. That probably could have raffled it. One of those was Rakos, and Swans are the benefit of some indecision. And out of all that, it's in the hands there of Jesse Turner, the skipper at half back. So the Swans dodger, big bullet there. Turner just kicked for touch there. Blakely along with his East Perth teammate, or opposition I should say, the ball was belted back over the boundary line. On the Loftus Rex centre side of the ground, the eastern wing of course, of Leederville Oval. Crowd starting to build. Beautiful part of the metro area to call Perth of course as you look down to the south of the ground, the city in the distance. Bit of carnival atmosphere in the north. Waffle Wonderland, of course, a major promotion for the Waffle this season. So, in a sideshow alley starting to take some shape down that end of the ground. East Perth, trying to keep things as smooth as possible. Swans with some late possession. Have to be clean. This should be a goal for the Royals if they can sort things out. There's been some dispossession in defence. And East Perth will have a kick on goal. to me like it's Schofield. 15 metres out. And East Perth, just get a late one. That'll hurt the Swans in defence. 6-3, 39. Swans, 4-3. 27. That's a coach killer. In fact, Tedesco popping that through for Royals. So goal kickers, so far for both sides, we'll have a look through that, we've got a 
break in play. So Med Hat, Tedesco kicking his second. They've got a couple each, Crowden with a single, and of course, Rakos. And then for Swans, Cartwright, Clark, Coleman, and of course, McLaughlin. Hit three in round one and has one to quarter time. So the buffer is 12 points. Jones wins it in the direction there of Swan Districts, collected by his opposition, Ruckman there and Blakely. Blakely goes long to centre half forward, and a good mark taken in defence there by McCready. McCready with a clearing kick finds Randall. Randall on centre wing. Tedesco, previous goal kicker, makes the mark on the wing. Nice little ball inside. Finds Robertson. Robertson will go by hand. He should get it back. Starrick and Robertson will just share this. Goes to the broadcast wing. It's Tom Corey Watts. Long way down from a back pocket. Finds Brayshaw. Brayshaw being a natural mover of the ball. Looks to play on. Just wanders his, around, his way around the defenders. Pretty casual. Brilliant work over the head there. Christian Amadjuri. He also kicked free last week. And at quarter time, with Emma Jury laying on the deck, we have a game well and truly on our hands. East Perth have started things and have gone to 6 3 39, so they've laid down the statement. Swans 4 3 27. It's quarter time here at the Waffle Round 2. You are on the AFL app, of course, afl.com.au. We'll be back in a few moments for the second term, live from Leaderville Oval. This waffle stream is brought to you by Maxis Tires. Performance when it's wanted, safety when it's needed. I love a sunburnt country. A land of sweeping plains. Of ragged mountain ranges. Of drought and flooding rains. When the lucky country isn't so lucky. Lucky you're with Amy. The stadium is the host. Draw the battle lines. You acknowledge your opponent on the field and in the stands. You hear that deafening chant. It's sometimes just one among the many. It's them that unites us. Bring them on. Maxis Tires. From an impressive heritage, tires that deliver safety and performance on and off road. Maxus Tires. Performance when it's wanted, safety when it's needed. Punt from 50. Win. Little too into the game. Win. Too cocky? Man, nah, almost a win. Risking it all for the glory. Win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. At Truck Assist, we only cover one thing. Specifically, trucks for landscaping, trucks for cabinet making, bed trucks. Mm, smell that bread truck. Trucks for chippies, ones for brickies. Oh, and really big vans. We get your business sorted. With roadside assist, if your battery says nope. Downtime cover, if this is your only hope. And motor cover if things don't go to plan. That's insurance from the specialists. Truck Assist, it's what we do. You come from the Pilbara, it's very daunting. Coming to Optus full stop, let alone coming out in the grass. In my head at the start, I realised there was thousands of people watching me. Was that scary or was that exciting? 
was played by my young fellow was stoked as soon as he got the message. I've been bragging about it at school, it's been the talk of school. It's all about uh, what might happen down the line because of moments like this. Football, but teammates and the way they bond afterwards is what it's all about. This waffle stream is brought to you by Truck Assist. Insurance to keep on earning. Welcome back to Leaderville Oval. It's obviously quarter time here between Swan Districts and East Perth. The game in the balance at the moment for both sides. Swan Districts had some patches of that quarter where they hit back with a couple of goals in a row, but East Perth looked pretty settled in their midfield and across that half forward line and could manufacture six goals three in the opening quarter. As we mentioned, 6-3 to Swan Districts, 4-3. Goal kickers to Swans, Cartwright, Clark, Coleman and McLaughlin, all singles. And of course, for the Royals, Medhat has kicked a couple. Tedesco with a couple, one of those late in the quarter. Uh, Crowden with one and also Ray Koss with one goal. We'll have a look at the stats. Always interesting to see what's going on in that place. Hamish Brayshaw with 11 disposals. Probably could have kicked a goal out of a couple of forward frontes where there was a couple of behinds were kicked. Schumacher has picked up eight possessions. Crowden's been important for East Perth. His seven possessions have been telling. He may not be the best player on the ground, but every time he does get the ball, he'll make something happen. North's also been serviceable, along with Stanley Wright, with seven possessions and five apiece. For Swan Districts, Jesse Turner has picked up 12 touches, been busy across halfback. Uh, I thought Shellcraft, that being Jai Shellcraft, was also very good for Swans across the middle of the ground and a wing with 10. And it must be said that Nathan Blakely is working, uh, well, he's guts out really in the middle of the ground as an extra ruck rover and effectively the ruckman has picked up six disposals. Hit out wise, hasn't been overly dominant, but has certainly followed up his own football. Aiden Clark with five touches and Thomas Edwards with five touches, I thought was really impressive across that forward line and certainly gave Swan Districts a target. We've got an update from the Revo Fitness Stadium, of course. Other games that are happening at this stage. The Sharks have been outrageously accurate. They've kicked seven straight, still going in that first quarter against the home side there in Claremont, who have kicked two goals, four. We'll run through the goal kickers. Marsh a couple, that being Josh Marsh, Hagen, Lawler, Cody Leggett, the former Demon, Maguire and Schofield all have singles for the Sharks and of course for Claremont. Love and Manuel have one each. So Claremont with a huge amount of work to do in that second term and for our other supporters of the West Coast Eagles in the reserves Fronte and of course a South Fremantle big winners over West Coast this afternoon. 22 goals 11 over the West Coast Eagles. 8 goals 7.55 This afternoon's games one to come. Perth will play West Perth. The Demons have a pretty ordinary record up there at Pentanet Stadium against West Perth. Can they break that duck? And of course, Subiaco, are we filling the Sunday void? The Peel Thunder tomorrow at this very ground being lead of a level. So, Waffle spread here and far over the entire weekend the way that we like it. And this game certainly in the balance. Six of those goals for East Perth have been kicked all to the southern end or the city end of the ground. Swans will be looking to hit back, kick an early one and make a game of this. They did trail by 12 points though, so plenty left in it. Wait for the umpire to get things underway. In the second term, you're on the AFL app, of course, afl.com.au. Umpire signals to get it underway for the second term. Blakely to compete against Jones. Blakely got a hand to that, followed up by Brayshaw. It's a hand pass out. Here's Schumacher, was impressive in that first quarter. This gets a little ball. Brayshaw was clean enough. Goes back by hand to Van Diemen. Back to Brayshaw, who's returning from concussion. So good to see him out there. Of course, his brother, four or five weeks back in Angus Brayshaw has retired from the Melbourne Demons through to the concussion rules. So we certainly wish him all the best, along with Hamish in his return onto the Oval this afternoon. Big talking point is concussion these days. Swans have the ball at half back. Goes to Pina, who quickly had to dispossess the footy. And he's lucky enough to pick out a target there in Cipro. I'm not sure he quite meant that. Cipro, though, 
has the ball at half back, goes back in board. Rokar takes that pretty comfortably. Goes with his kick to the veteran there in Tony Knot. I feel like he's been around for about 100 years in defence there for Swans. The nothing ball to the centre wing position. Picked up there by Collins. Collins goes by hand, comes back to Alex Howard. Howard will get it back here at right half forward. Thumping kick to full forward in the direction there of Coleman. And he's pulled it in. Good movement from Swans. And a telling kick in the contest. Six two last week. Have as mentioned a couple of times in the broadcast. Pull down the eight marks last week. So we started the season off in fine form. Has kicked one. Can he make it a second? We'll kick from 35. Left footer. Kick with the left, and it went left. Through for a behind. So a let off there for the Royals. And the kick will be taken by Wright at full back. Wright plays on the teeth of the goal square. Certainly ran his full 15 metres. Brayshaw will be the target and he'll land on the chest. So Swans were caught out there. Good movement there from East Perth. Very encouraging. Well, this will be a free kick you would suggest. Almost given away. It's landed on the chance there of Shane Hilly. So Hilly with his ball. Not again, poor decision made there by East Perth. Turner should clear comfortably and find North. So North is at right half forward, goes by hand, finds McLaughlin at the feet there of Coleman, and no forward likes it there. So there may be a little bit of friendly advice just sent on to McLaughlin, probably more directly by dialogue than email, just to let him know the young fella that get the ball up. In between right half forward, that right forward pocket, some 35 metres around from Swan's goal. Coleman's had a shot, he's kicked it behind. The Swans are pressing again. Blakely was just taken to ground. Here's McLaughlin. Into the path there of the skipper there in Turner. The outbys caught out a free kick though. It may be late on McLaughlin, who will be the recipient of the free kick. There was a snap on the left there from Turner. Cut off defensively there by East Perth, but they've had a win out of that, Swan Districts. And it will be, as I mentioned, Jackson McLaughlin. Long way from home. The boy from Geelong. Beautiful part of the world. Darwin heads down the road. Well worth checking out. Of course, their stadium over there in Geelong has been redone. Again, another one push to the left-hand side. So Coleman, McLaughlin getting some early behinds. But worth making some note out of all that. The two behinds have been kicked by Swans very early in this quarter. If you don't take the most of your opportunities, often Murphy's law is that uh, the ball will disappear down the other end and a goal will be kicked. Brayshaw on the eastern wing. Goes with a searching kick. Into the path there of Shane Hilly. Another turnover here from East Perth has been pretty uncharacteristic like. Picked up there by Rokar. Rokar with his kick. Into the forward line. Cut off again there by East Perth, who just have a sea of numbers. One of those was Angus Scott, who gives it by foot over to Crowden. Now Crowden can settle. He's a left footer. Again, disposal, letting down both sides. Turner received it there from Collins. Collins gave it off there to Clark. Clark inside 50. Coleman to snap it up. Good defence there from Jones. East Perth were lucky. Lots of numbers on the outer side of the ground. They still managed to turn it over. Coleman, if he's good enough to hit a target. And they eventually do.
Hewitt was involved in that. Reedy was the recipient of the eventual mark in the forward line. Will Reedy. Saw him a couple of years ago on the boob out there, the Swan Districts, at their home ground at Bassendine. Was sporting the long hair that day. Kick on its way. Swan Districts make the Royals pay. There was a little bit of end-to-end -end stuff from both sides. East Perth falling down at half forward. Swan Districts making them pay. And they pinch the first one of the second term and they kick their fifth. Fine finish there from Reedy. Swans go to 5-5-35. Five, five, the Royals yet to add to their 6-3 tally. Reedy goes to the bench, as it's commonly known within modern footy. And you kick a goal, you go to the bench. And Shellcraft will come back on for Swan Districts and go right back into the middle of the ground. Paired up against the Sandover medalist, or the former Sandover medalist from 23 there in Brayshaw. So, uh, plenty of learning going on there for the young man. Smith back in the ruck will compete up against Jones. So that rotation seems to be their go-to. Jones, Brayshaw, scraps the ball forward, a shocking bounce for all in sundry. Gilly goes back inside. Tedesco just fell over at the critical time. Some old-fashioned defence there from Collins. Collins just forced to hack it back over the face of goal. This will be a certainty for the Royals. What was going on there? And in the end, it's Angus Scott who found himself in the right spot at the right time to kick it off his left and pop through the goal. The Royals pick up a gift. 7-3-45. They lead the Swans 5-5-35. You're still going to be good enough to finish, and Angus Scott was certainly that. Swans just a bit untidy in defence at the highest level in the waffle. One mistake can really go against you. Turner, I see, has come up on to win the Swans. With some slight issues with power at the moment. The lights are on and off. The scoreboard's gone to sleep for a Saturday afternoon, so we're relying on the old school values of pen and paper. Free kick here, you would suggest. Goes against East Perth. It looked to me like it was going to be a simple free kick to the Royals. Swans through Reedy. Kick back into the face of goal, and there'll be a mark taken there by Cartwright. Hewitt, in fact, the man that steered that ball over to the direction there of Cartwright, who took it in the chest in the left forward pocket. So the Swans should be able to go back, get the response that they need. Cartwright, of course, has kicked one. Should make it two. Deliberate approach. Steers it through. The Swans get one back. Pretty vital two in the scheme of things. They stay in touch to the Royals. 6-5 to 7-3. And once again, mistakes from either side. They've coughed up goals in defence. Both sides have been good enough to make each other pay at times. Hence... The margin being less than a kick. Swans the travelling side today. Taking it up to East Perth, who would have come in as lukewarm favourites, purely because they're playing at home. Both winners in round one, of course, East Perth over South Fremantle and Swan Districts. Big winners over the West Coast Eagles. Out there at Bassendean. Hewitt into a wing now for Swans. Smith climbed high. Left it behind. Jones, the big fella. Goes to half forward. There's a good battle between Pina 
And of course, Raycos for East Perth. Raycos is the winner. Interesting hand pass. Out to the path there of Cartwright, who comes back in board from Schumacher. Being Angus Schumacher. Another boy from the East. Across from the Bendigo Pioneers. And Carlton, of course, Angus Schumacher was on their list. So distance, you'd suggest, shouldn't be much of an issue. Good part of the world too, it's Bendigo. The hour out of Melbourne. Schumacher got under that, a bit like a golf swing. Just miscued it. Just to the right of the fairway. Through for a behind. Swans can rebound. Shellcraft with another position. Goes to Collins. Will Collins is at half back. He's in the shadows. Collins has his kick smothered. Swan's good enough to get out of that through Shellcraft again. And a good mark taken there by Pasini. Right in front of our commentary position, Pasini is. Goes back in board. Kick will have to be spot on. Over the head there of Pina. Comes back to Clark. Clark again with the pressure of being spot on. Puts out there the path there of Pina. He takes the mark at half back. Bearing down on him there was Raycos. Pina has support there from Turner. Ignores that. Comes back in board. Finds Ursek. Of course, Ursek coming back from injury. Switches the ball wide. Finds Hewitt, who has some support through Watson. And they've done this pretty well. Finds Shellcraft, goes with a kick, here's Collins. A rarity to go forward, kicks to Coleman. Just over the top. Lux of fortune there for the Royals, it crashed into the knees there of Kai Wilcox through for a behind, so they dodge a bullet. The Swans, you could see what they were trying to do, just trying to find the fat side of the ground, which was gonna open up just to hold possession at East Perth's defense. Luckily had their thought processes and programs worked out. It was in the hands there of Hill. Who's at half back for East Perth. Long kick. Going back with the flight there was not. And he'll be the recipient of a free kick, even though he took the mark, which was courageous in itself. He's also got the clip over the left and right ear. Searching ball again, goes looking for McLaughlin. Just getting better and better is McLaughlin. Steers his kick. And Reedy, whether he ran out of acreage, no, it's been played inside the chalk. Ball on the eastern wing. Reedy is usually a raking kick. Low with the eyes, fantastic kick, finds Blakely. Blakely at left half four, still 55 from goal. Clearly been an instruction from the coach to lower the eyes. Blakely this time goes to a two on one. Coleman, well, he was always going to be out body. The two players over the top of the fist. Hammered out of play and there'll be a throw in in that left forward pocket. Still an opportunity for Swans though. East Perth have got to be awake to this. A couple of set plays. Whether Blakely goes with a flick behind and there's a player that runs through or whether they flicks it towards goal. Be up against Zach Hill, the smaller of the two. He'll actually got a bit of purchase on that. Riding hard at the bottom of the pack. It was Shellcraft. Been really impressed by him. Glocklin with the snap. Smith. Is there a free kick? The umpire has paid the free kick. And looks to me like there was a tug of the arm there on Coleman. Where is Perth the victim of potentially the more higher profile forward? Smith was in front of Coleman there, so there's probably an argument that Coleman was held. But will be a certainty, and will give the Swans the lead if he kicks it. Coleman, eight metres out, made the umpire do a little bit of a dance to the left, kicks the goal. Swans taking their opportunities. That's all you can do. And they've taken the lead. 7-6 to the Royals, 7-4, Coleman with a couple.
but assisted by Cartwright also with a couple of goals. He just joined us on the AFL app, afl.com.au. The Swans have the two-point lead. They trailed at quarter time, 6-3 to 4-3, so that 12-point deficit there for the Swans, but they've clawed their way back. Hit three, three this quarter and restricted the Royals to 1-1. One, one. So they won the quarter. They've started to get on top in the middle of the ground. That's where the source has been. Blakely's been so impressive around the ground. It's Jones on his backside in the middle of Leaderville Oval. That's a task in itself, the big fella. I don't think he'll take too kindly to that. So watch for the high knee from Jones this time. Battle continues. Hammered forward there by Randall. Just slapped it forward. But again, Swans are clean enough just to get the ball moving. And it lands in the capable hands of Will Reedy. Lovely disposal and a beautiful outstretched grab. Beautifully. He's a real talent is Edwards. So Edwards in between the broadcast wing. Of course, right half forward has a lead there from Turner, who he ignores. Almost slipping over. There is Rokor. Managed to keep the feet on the deck, take the mark. This time just goes in the Coleman direction yet again. The East Perth defence, former unison of five. McLaughlin across the face of goal. The Royals just waited around in defence. One of those was Van Diemen. Eventually will go by hand. And they'll clear. Still they go from half back. Without a couple of bounces on the outer side. That looks to me like a shell craft. Kick inside. The Royals, an opportunity off the outstep. Hilly with a kick on goal. There's a rare forward front hay there for East Perth. And Hilly probably could have done a little bit better. Picks off a behind. East Perth, though, another opportunity. Mistake there from the Swans. Turner got a shocking bounce. The ball will roll out of play in the right forward pocket. Team minutes played second term. East Perth trail by point seven five forty seven. Swan District seven six forty eight. Rucks to go at it. Hill will ruck for East Perth. Wrapped up. Another stoppage. Twenty five metres around from the face of goal. The foot of the pack there was Shane Hilly, of course, was at last player to kick that behind. Blakely was brave. Probably gave a shove in the back there to Hilly. Didn't give away the free kick. Here is the man of the moment. And another second shot at goal is Shane Hilly. Missed the lot. Across the face and there'll be a free kick to Collins in that outer back pocket. So Collins finding a target with fatigue setting in late in the second term. Good looking kick. Out there to Knott, who's laid a finger on that, so it'll be a ball in. Still 70 metres around from the East Perth's goal. Between that eastern wing, left half forward. Jones and Blakely to resume the ruck. Jones. Schumacher. Kick back in to the arc of 50, or the edge of the arc of 50, and the Swans are good enough through Turner. Now to Blakely, where the option is going to come from. Ball's in the middle of the ground. Rokor with his kick. Not the best there for Coleman, but he likes to hit the pack nice and hard. Filling up his own football. Good battle there between both Coleman and Nicholas Robertson. Reedy in the van. Reedy, if he's clean with his possession, can squeeze it through. East Perth are desperate. Hair pass there to McLaughlin. Comes to Edwards, Edwards to finish, and he kicks the goal on the left foot. Smart hand pass, good hand pass there from Jackson McLaughlin. Just was so clean. And the Swans pounce on a mistake and make the Royals pay and extend their lead. 8-6-54.
East Perth 7547. Leads out to seven points. Chick under 20 minutes, uh, 21 minutes play, I should say. Second term. Waffle football on the AFL app, afl.com.au. Edwards kicking his first of the day. Looked very likely in that first term. So I'm not surprised that he's got to the end of one eventually in this second term. Swans have extended it out. They've now got six individual goal kickers. Cartwright, Coleman, Clark, Edwards, McLaughlin and Reedy. The Royals have got five contributors across the board. Ball back in the middle. Brayshaw, that right foot kick. Tried hard in this first half. We're looking there for Schofield or overran the ball at left half forward. Defensively again, pretty well set up the Swans, not raffles it out. Kick ran through the path there of McLaughlin, who was involved in that previous goal. Swans hammer it forward. North lost the footy. McLaughlin just again clean by foot and finds Edwards yet again. This time it left half forward. So Edwards, the previous goal kicker, found his partner in crime there in McLaughlin. A few hands on the hips of both sides. Warm conditions today in Perth for sport in general. Top of 33 degrees. Bit of old fashioned humidity too amongst Perth this afternoon. So Edwards, vital kick on goal. And he's pushed it left. Very laconic in his approach, but he's a talent through for a behind. 8-7 Swan Districts. 55, the lead East Perth, 7-5-47. Boy was in the back pocket again. Disposal letting them down. Just pitched inside. Well umpired there by the boundary umpire on the outer side of the ground. There'll be a throw in. 60 around from Swan's goal. Smith and Jones to resume battle. Jones from the back of the pack. Easily wins. Clearing ball. Came off the boot there of Shellcraft. So the Royals defenders spoiled themselves. Edwards. Back to Turner. Turner by hand to Roca. Beautiful kick, and it finds Painter inside, some space inside the attacking arc of 50. And Painter should go back and have a settled shot from 40 metres. Swans negotiated that pretty well. Painter in the right spot at the right time. Sporting the bright boots, bright pink and orange. Peter with his approach. Again, another wasteful shot there for Swans. They have had some opportunities this quarter. Through 4A behind. They can come back and bite you. Here's East Perth from half back. Through Robertson. They've mucked around with it. Cut off there by Pacini. Goes back inside 50 off the hands there of Coleman. Lands on the chest there. Gave off the hand pass. Kick on goal there from Reedy. And the Swans respond. Very unlike East Perth. And Reedy does what he does best. Grabs the footy, he can run, he can carry, he can finish. And all of a sudden, Swans are out to a decent lead late in the second term. 25 minutes gone, a lead 9-8-62, East Perth 7547. Of course, East Perth have only kicked the one goal this quarter. And Swans have added 5-5. Realistically, it probably could have been 7-3 if they'd kicked straight. 
for the Mets. The Royals have added one goal, two. Reedy joins a string of three goal kickers now. Cartwright, the couple, Coleman's two, and Reedy joins them with two goals. Been very serviceable. East Perth desperate for a goal. Have the ball with Emma Dury, who's just been brilliantly held today by Swans. Comes back to Brayshaw, the fist there of Van Diemen. Puts it out the path there of Medhat, snaps around the body. East Perth off the ground. That was Hill, and he got a boot on that. Zachary Hill goes through for a behind, so East Perth. Luck against them on the deck. Oh, Swans again. Not very convincing. Crowden has the ball inside 50. Should finish for East Perth and does. Well, East Perth have done basically what the Swans did down the other end. From fullback, the ball was brought back into Cipro. He was dispossessed. Ball went to ground and Crowden did the rest. Settled on that left boot, was never going to miss from 35. And gets one late back for East Perth, 8 6 54. Going back to eight points, one district's 9 8 62. Big goal there from Crowden, which will give East Perth that just been a feel good belief before going into the half time break. Two goals for Crowden. He joins Matt Hat with two and also Tedesco with two for the multiple goal kickers for the Royals. Big takeaway late in the second term. You would suggest that the under two minutes of this quarter, factoring that the Swans have kicked five goals in this quarter, the Royals have kicked two, and that one being a late one. Could add some time on. Schumacher just hammers his way through this pack, wants to give it off. Good hand pass to Randall. Randall, he was dispossessed. Tedesco goes by hand, Crowden in all sorts of trouble, tackled in between the scope there of the attacking 50 for East Perth and of course the edge of the square. Have a ball up, stoppage, Jones probably taken high, good decision there for the umpire. Blakely argues his case, there's no point in doing that. Defensively the Swans will have to push back, now Jones hasn't moved it very quickly, gets a lead from Tedesco. Goes long to the pocket. And the mark taken there by Hilly. In fact, that's Medhat. You could just see that unfolding there for the Royals. Jones with his kick. Good dummy lead there from Tedesco out of the goal square. And Medhat, who has kicked two, will go back and shoot for his third. Can't be long left in the first half. Tough kick too. In the right forward pocket. Out of the shadows. Kick on its way. Has it snuck through? It has. Big goal there to the Royals. Medhat, deadly by foot, has kicked three. And the Royals nearly locked things up before half time. Tick over 29 minutes play. East Perth, 9-6-60. Trail Swan District 9862. Big goal there from Crowden and Medhat, which has been late in the piece in the first half. Will they be big talking points for the result of this game in an hour's time? You would suggest you'd have to have some say. Late goals against other sides can really kill you. And I imagine the Swan District's coach. Will be absolutely filthy with that. Jones again, it's Blakely. Blakely took his eyes off the footy. Emma Jury starting to get some possessions, which is encouraging sign for the Royals. Not went back with a flight to Desco. Gathers around the body, the snap on goal. Is it there? It is. Liam Tedesco. East Perth have turned the game on a 10. You can just see, again, Jones effective. Got that clearance through Randall. Beautiful pick up there by Emma Jury on the replay. 
Tedesco just settled around goal. He's got enough purchase on the right foot. And saluted the crowd. Kicks his third. East Perth incredibly with three goals in four minutes. Crowd in one of those. Medhat also one of those in Tedesco. Starting to bring Emajuri into the game, which is good signs for the Royals. Four points, the buffer. Good game of footy. Reedy on the burst takes the mark on half back, or I should say on the centre wing. Goes by hand. Bonch Shellcraft. Shellcraft went looking for Rokart. Swans running out of acreage in between the right forward pocket and that resting right half forward there will be a ball in. Be desperate to snap this three goal streak of East Perth and kick a goal themselves. Blakely and Jones resume battle and that has decided it for half time for the moment. East Perth kicking three goals in the last four and a half minutes. They lead at half time, 10-6, 66. Swan Districts, 9-8-62. Goal kickers to half time for both sides. Bedhat with three for the Royals. Tedesco with three, Crowden with two. And singles to Raycos and Scott. And for Swans, Cartwright with a couple. Coleman two and Reading two are the multiples. Clark, Edwards and McLaughlin with singles. We'll be back in a few moments' time, probably a good 15 to 20 minute break. It's half time here in Waffle Round 2 action between the Swans and East Perth. It's East Perth 10 6 66 over Swan District 9 8 62. Back in a few moments. This Waffle stream is brought to you by Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Hi, Shell. Shell has high blood pressure, and the rising cost of living certainly doesn't help. Annie manages her diabetes with good nutrition, but fresh fruit and veg prices keep rising. And Jack has high cholesterol, but nothing is higher than his pet bills. That's why they save more money every year by getting their prescriptions from Chemist Warehouse. And you will too. Head online or look for our price list in store to see how much you'll save. Chemist Warehouse, discounting prescriptions every day. Punt from 50, win. Little too into the game, win. Too cocky, meh, nah, almost a win. Risking it all for the glory. Win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. Umpiring. It is for everyone. Sunbird country. A land of sweeping plains. Of ragged mountain ranges. Of drought and flooding rains. When the lucky country isn't so lucky. Lucky you're with Amy. Rivalry adds plenty of intensity towards the game. After last year's narrow loss, came down to the you know, final kick. We definitely want to go over there and get one back against them. The want to be the best state is, is there for both of us, and we're both really proud competitions. We're definitely going in with a game plan, and we think we've got what it takes to not only compete with them, but take it out. The pros in playing an away game is that we get to travel together and although that happens regularly at AFL level, it doesn't happen at Waffle level and, and it gives a, a great insight into how to prepare and to go over there as a, as a group and uh, be united and perform strongly. 
rivalry between WA and South Australia now has got to the point that we're the only two states that compete. It's such a big deal. There's only 23 people picked to go over there, so you won't really want to represent WA and get a win. It's chilly, but it's nice. You know, we're going going over there and representing a whole state. Um, so obviously the win is really important, but just the way we conduct ourselves on and off the field, I think, is very important. The hard thing is that within 10 teams, you've got a, a mixture of many players. The connection point is something that is um, front of our minds when we pull together the team. Feeling warmth, you know? Adelaide's really come braced up with open arms, mate. We've really had to get united early and quickly because we've only got a short time to train together before the big game. Catch it! Obviously every Monday we're meeting and we're talking about how we want to play, um, talking about the tactics and the roles that we want to do and even as a group we're meeting up on a Sunday where in previous years we haven't just to get that bond which I think is working. Obviously we verse each other and can be quite heated at times. Technically I'm supposed to hate them so coming into this game now I'm already loving every one of them. But to be able to come together, you know, all 10 different clubs and, and really gel quite quickly, it's actually quite special and something that, you know, me personally, I really look forward to going out there with the other boys. Oh, it's a great city. It's Everything's really close and connected. Our hotel is only walking distance from the ground, which is nice. The weather's beautiful. It's dry at the moment. It's been drizzling a little bit this morning. We expect maybe a little bit of rain, but not a lot. So looks like it'll be a pretty dry deck and good conditions for footy. Six tons. Pretty good. The ground is just amazing. It's like such a great opportunity that we get to play on this ground. And yeah, just pretty excited and uh, ready to dig into it. No egos in this group. Like we really bought into the to the program, and I think that that just shows that state footy's alive and well. And having um, a chat with a few of the SA guys, they're the same. It was a really good team performance. There were no real standouts. Zangers was good. I mean, he's a classy player. He's a, um, a good mover. He's tall. He's got a great left foot. So no surprises that he won the medal. It could have gone one or two ways at half time. We were sort of up against it and. You know, teams gone by might have thrown the towel in, but um, we dug in. Yeah, that third quarter, we really turned the momentum, and um, I remember Benny Sokol kicked a couple of um, really nice goals. And then big Jack Buller kicked one up with his level, and um, the spirit of the team was amazing at that point in time. We all got around the big fella, and uh, at, that, at that point, the momentum was with us, and, you know, we were, um, we were looking like we were going to run away with it. So, it, again, disappointing to lose, but um, a couple of nice moments. I'm proud of the team, I'm proud of um, Cam and the program. It's just such an honour and a privilege to play in that game. The stadium is the host. Draw the battle lines. You acknowledge your opponent on the field and in the stands. You hear that deafening chant. It's sometimes just one among the many. It's them that unites us. Bring them on. Weston. England. Over the top. Really good run of play here from Claremont. The kick for goal has made its way through. And Claremont opened their affair. Boundary throw in. West Perth doing really well there against the run of play. Over the footy was Hopley. Ball towards goal. Was that touched on the line? And that's gone through. Bolton comes, comes in hard. Spills out the back. Ball spilt out to Knott. Who puts it on the boot? And through for the goal! Do not believe it! Has the short option and uses it to Tregenza. 
Ricochet came off the boot of Logan and Tiekel, an unguarded goal square. He launches from outside the arc. It needs the bounce. It rolls and goes all the way for an early contender. Erasmus bought some time to the captain. Hancock with a bullet. That's how you finish a goal. He does it with aplomb. The Thunder get the first of the third. Jones brings the ball to ground. Kelly's there for the Bulldogs. Gets a handball to Turnbull. He runs inside 50. Fires on goal on the right boot. And the Bulldogs have their first. The crowd have something to cheer about. Here comes Donaldson. Handball over into the square. Kelly can't pick it up. Comes back to Donaldson on his left boot. It's a sausage. What a goal from Donaldson. Goal of the day. And his long kick into quite a strong breeze. Finds Jai Reedy. Gets it on the ground in front of Lee Coleman. He's back in the team and his kick on the left is good. So his first kick in waffle football in four seasons, a minute and a half into the new year, is a goal for Swan Districts. Goes long now. There's a lot of bodies up there. Ball on the ground. Rotham well tackled. Superbly tackled by Aidan Cartwright, who dragged him down. And has... Shall Craft again comes outside to Witherton, and that's a long kick looking for Rusco. Pushes his man off, gets his hand on. He's going to go on the left. No, inside out, right footer, and he's kicked a superb goal, Trey Rusco. And he kisses the crowd too. He's going to get another one in a minute here too. Doesn't, doesn't look as though he's got any ill effects from that heavy bump in the marking contest. Ball goes forward to Rawlinson. Three so far this quarter. Dewar from long distance. He goes long and he's true as well. So Tyrrell Dewar. Now to Blakely again. Back to Cipro. Handball outside. No, he's going to go himself. Could kick a goal from here. It's a long way out though in, into the breeze. But he's on line and he gets it too. That's a great goal. of a spree happening now there's a long kick coming from Aiden Cartwright and he's kicked the long goal from 50 great finish from Cartwright still Subiaco will go through Greg Clark Clark again back in there applies the tackle Perth have to be careful here a snap around the body and Foley uses his AFL experience Subiaco looks, looks to nurse the ball up to Sinar Ford Campbell into Sonar Ford. Here's an opportunity to close on goal. Sturgiano kicks another one for the Lions. So did Simpson. Delivery there. Wasn't that effective there to Clark, but they got away with it. Now finds Cooley. Cooley. They can run now, the Demons. Here's Noah Catcher. Has a bounce. Goes inside 50. Wonky ball. Kicks the goal. Hit back. Ball goes to ground. Picked up there by Thompson. Back to Rogan Henry. Usually a strapping kick. Puts out the front there of Davis. Here's Austin Davis. You can hear the crowd go up a notch. Davis has had three bounces. He approaches goal. Davis with the shot. Kicks the goal. How about that? How about that? You come from the Pilbara. It's very daunting. Coming to Optus full stop. They're like coming out in the grass. In my head at the start, I realized there was thousands of people watching me. Was that scary or was that exciting? I was quite both. My young fellow was stoked as soon as he got the message. I've been bragging about it at school. It's been the talk of school. It's all about uh, what might happen down the line because of moments like this. Football, but teammates and the way they bond afterwards is what it's all about. I'm Charlie Thomas and I play for the West Coast Eagles. Yarra Bowers, Fremantle Dockers. Lauren Wakefer, West Coast Eagles. Gabby O'Sullivan, Fremantle Dockers. So I started my football pathway uh, in the Auskick program. I started my football journey at Safety Bay Stingers. There wasn't enough girls to fill a team, so me and my sister and a few of my mates jumped on board and said, why not, let's just go have some fun. Started off at junior footy at Korean Junior Football Club. And I guess them down there was just a really good community club and created my love for the game. I was lucky enough to get a call up to South Fremantle. And I moved to Subiaco at Waffle level, which was awesome. I started in Rogers Cup and then moved up to league. In my second year of playing at South Fremantle, I got the call up to play the National Academy. Draft night came around and 
Eagles gave me the call up, so yeah, now here I am. <laughs> and when I first found out there was going to be an AFLW comp and I, I may be playing, I was just ecstatic. Obviously, thought it was a dream for a very long time. I remember watching AFLW on TV and I think that's the moment where I realised that that's really what I wanted to do with my footy and that's where I wanted to take it. And then from there, getting into the state academies and national academies cemented my thought in my head that I wanted to make it there. Getting drafted was unreal. So much hard work of so many years to finally come together. The step up from Waffle to AFL, I think the biggest difference for me was the pace of the game. I've definitely had injuries and that, and that comes with the title, you know. I think I'm a very hard player. I would never change it. This year I really knew that I wanted to come back after hurting my shoulder in round two and um, that was just something that kept me on track. If you told me when I was in rehab that I would have played all ten games this season and got a rising start, I'm a, I probably would have pinched myself and laughed at you a little bit. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love football for the fact that you get to be with you know 30 of your mates. 30 new you know, female best mates and then the club, they're just so supportive and, and loving. When you get out in the field, we're essentially just playing a game that's super fun, so love it. I love being able to challenge myself and see how far that my body can take me and, and how far I can take my footy and I'm really grateful to be here. Being fortunate to get quite a few opportunities through football, mainly with the people that I've met and then also being able to do a little bit of coaching in football, yeah, getting work in the, in the sport industry with my teaching, so it's opened a lot of doors for me. If you're ever thinking about playing footy, I say do it. You get to play with your mates, have fun and also challenge yourself together in a team environment. Being a part of a team is, is the best thing that you can do. If you go out there and have fun and you love playing it, why not continue playing it? And, and if you get to run around with your mates while you're doing it, there's nothing better than that. The fact that young girls get to come up to us you know, after a game and say that they want to be like us, I, I think it's just surreal and I think that's amazing for them to have someone to look up to. Back when I was younger, footy wasn't really a, a pathway for girls, so I think I'm really lucky now that I get to stand up here and, and show the girls that there are pathways. I mean, you never thought that we'd be able to do this full time and, and be the best players we can be, be in football and that's given me that and I'll never ever take that for granted. from 50, win. A little too into the game, win. Too cocky, nah, almost a win. Risking it all for the glory, win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. Maxis Tyres. From an impressive heritage, tyres that deliver safety and performance on and off-road. Maxxis Tyres. Performance when it's wanted, safety when it's needed. This Waffle Stream is brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Save more money every year with discounted prescriptions in every store every day. And welcome back to Leadville Oval. Certainly is a theme of Waffle Wonderland, certainly carrying over. There's been a fair amount of music at halftime. We've seen East Perth been out for the last couple of minutes. They've run out. And of course, Swan Districts uh, gracing us with their presence as they are rolling onto the field as we speak. A good atmosphere here at Leadville Oval. We've seen the kids, plenty of boys and girls out there with their parents having a kick on the ground. It's exactly what you need here at the Waffle and what has been promoted. Plenty of hype, plenty of music, and it's probably stood up to the actual game itself. Been plenty of hype from afar for both of these teams leading into round two, and it's probably lived up to its uh, message at the moment. East Perth 10 6 66, Swan District 9 8 62. Of course, three late goals for East Perth have turned the game on its head. We saw Crowd and Med Hat, and of course, Tedesco finish nicely uh, in that space of time. Swan Districts. Can they respond 
in this uh, first portion of the third quarter. You'd suggest that they would have the cattle to do so. But it's all going to get back to the midfield of both sides and where the battle lies between both trucks. We've seen Scott Jones lead single-handedly pretty much in the first half with the 9-8 hit-outs compared to Nathan Blakely. Jones has been very, very influential, probably been the better player for mine for East Perth, if not their best. You have a look at the players' stats. We'll start with East Perth. Hamish Brochel with 19 touches to half-time. Coming back from concussion, he might say 19, but hasn't been overly influential around the ground, I wouldn't have thought. Some of those kicks have been scrappy clearances out of the middle of the ground, but clearances nonetheless. Crowden's been probably the most damaging of the mids for East Perth with the 11 touches. Has kicked that, that goal, as we mentioned. Um, and obviously, Angus Schumacher has showed glimpses of his brilliance with the 11 touches using his experience. Angus Scott starting to come in the game with 10 possessions. And, of course, Liam Tedesco might have only had the seven disposals, but he's made the most of it, kicking three goals and has certainly proven to be a thorn in the side of the Swan Districts. For the Swans, stat-wise, Jesse Turner led the way to half-time with 21 disposals. He's had some support somewhat from Shellcraft with 17 disposals, Roka with 15, and of course, McLaughlin, I thought, was pretty underrated in that first half for his movement across half-forward and in the fourth pocket. Created, uh, did really well, put his head over the ball, hit one goal one, probably unlucky not to have a second. He's got 12 disposals to half-time. Tony Knott just does Tony Knott things, just goes back with a flight every day of the week. The veteran from Swan Districts has the 12 touches and has been influential down back in helping out Will Collins across that centre half back line. And of course, Will Reedy, I thought, was very good in that second term, has the 12 touches and has also kicked a couple of goals to half time. So it's all on the balance, really, as the music will and truly rocking in the background. If you're a 90s kid like me, you'll know who that is. Only moments away from the start of the third term. So Jones will be the ruckman. Blakely will oppose him. And let's just see how both of these midfields are stacking up. Shellcraft, of course, in there for Swans. He's opposed there to Crowden. Rayshaw in there for his birth, the Sandover medalist. And of course, Michael Randall, who spent some more time in that second quarter, is in there for East Perth. Schumacher's out there on a wing for East Perth. Opposed to him will be Bradley Lynch, who's back in the side today. And away we go in the third term. Blakely won it down, followed his own footy. Crowding got a hand pass to Brayshaw, who with a scooping high ball. The Swans should clean it up from half back. Clearing kick, a high ball, which was presented there by Turner. Put it into space, running out of real estate on the outer side of the ground. Though is Reedy. There will be a throw in on the outer side of the ground on the eastern wing, in front of there of the Loftus, Loftus I should say, rec centre precinct. The people on the steps out there in your vision. Big first goal, you would suggest, whoever can kick that. With fatigue, you'd suggest also going to play a part in this second half. Swan Districts going back to go forward. There by Knott. High ball to half forward. Going back to the flight. Good mark taken there by Jones. Just picking up for where he left off. And Brayshaw should be able to soak up some time. Gives it off to Schumacher. Schumacher, 60 from goal. Settled kick. Goes to the forward pocket. Here's Hilly. Usually a very good thinker in these situations. Tedesco, kick three. Oh, brilliant smother. That might have been Collins coming through. Timely smother. Beautiful defence there from Swan Districts. Tedesco with a good turn of foot. And he had Shane Hilly in the Ford pocket too. So they've got some very good decision makers down there, East Perth. Hence their lead. And they get things right. They look sharp. Hill opposed to Blakely. Hammered forward, Van Diemen. Follows it back over the chalk, we'll have a throw in. The right forward pocket. East Perth into attack. Plenty of runners around. Schumacher to the back of this contest, just out of shot. Swans under pressure from East Perth in the opening two to three minutes. Likely. 
lost the tap. Shellcraft just bustled his way through. He's shown a lot, the 22-year-old. From the bottom of the pack, he spent the majority of the time down there. And a fair old sniff of the grass. Blakely with a tap. Should clear here, Swan District, through Lynch. Good kick, finds Cartwright on a half-back flank. Cartwright has Wilcox standing the mark. Just kicks a little ball. No more than 15 metres, could be right on it. Aiden Clark marks at half-back. Clark with his kick, will have to be sharp. Finds a skipper there in Turner. Usually a wonderful decision maker. Comes back in ball to Rokar. So Swans just building by foot. Rokar, just the required 15. Finds Aiden Clark. Clark with a sharp looking kick, comes back in board. Centre wing. Finds Lynch. Lynch. Sold some candy to Jones. Has to make a decision. Eventually goes back and finds Edwards. Edwards, 65 from goal. 70, in fact, on the centre wing. High kick. No good. Turnover. Had the right idea with the ball movement. It was always going to be chopped off. Schumacher in a half-back position. Come to the broadcast side of the ground, and I thank him for that. He turns the ball over. It comes to Edwards. Edwards. Just get the feeling that either side that lowers the eyes and can just nullify kicking into their forward line will win this game of footy. It's been that type of where each side has made each other pay at the key moments. Edwards to Turner. Turner with a low kick to Roker. Who comes back to Knott laterally. Not with his kick. The outer side of the ground finds Howard. Howard searching ball into the path there of Pina. Runs out of room. Push back over the line there by Shane Hilly. In a circular formation. They've gone to the outer side of the ground. The ball is 60 metres around at left half forward. Around from the Swans goal. Brayshaw by himself just standing at the front of this contest. That's no good for the Swans in their defence. Eventually they get some movement over there. Swans again through Knott. Settles a hand pass to Cipro, who gets it back. Now they should have it inside 50 here, Swans. Best kick. Eventually, ball is finding the boundary line. What a mean cart right there in the pocket. We'll have a throw in. So they've gained 30 metres, or 25 at least. Blakely, second in line of this contest. Jones won the tap pretty easily. Smash back over the boundary line and we'll do it all again. This will give us an opportunity to have a look at some other footy scores around here. That being in the waffle. East Fremantle, well and truly on top of the Claremont Tigers. 11-2, they lead Claremont 3-5. And of course, West Perth and Perth have just started their first quarter up there at Pentanet Stadium, up there at the beautiful June Lap Oval precinct. It's West Perth that lead one behind the Demons, yet to score. Inside 50 again there from Swans. And a good mark taken in that defensive back pocket there by Kai Wilcox. Maybe a switch is on here for East Perth. Just to take it away from the populated eastern wing side of the ground. Oh, rope that goes not. It takes a very good mark. Plays on with no fanfare. Finds Lynch. Set himself, did Tony not. Took a class mark. Comes back in board and finds Turner. Definitely been a change of pace here from Swans. The way that they're using possession and the way that they're transferring the ball around. The arc of 50, they've been a lot more patient. Turner, a left footer. Kick on its way. It's a behind. Through for a behind. Royals to bring it out from the back pocket. Booming left foot kick there from right. That's a very good mark taken on the outer side of the ground. 
Brentley pulled down there by Mitch Schofield. Schofield at half back, comes back in board. Finds Robertson, who's been serviceable across half back, gives it back to right, purely for nailing the foot skills. And the beautiful left foot kick. Certainly giving East Perth a chance through Brayshaw if he's clean. Has some options. Cruising past there was Angus Scott. Ignored him. Almost plucking the mark was Hill. Ball goes to ground. Tony not back there and wrestles the ball back over there with Van Diemen. And there'll be a throw in in that left forward pocket. Better movement there from East Perth. Some big names involved in Brayshaw. And some very good ball movement there for the dangerous Stanley Wright. Hill to do the full ruck work, opposed to Smith. Good to go with the soccer skills. Hit from the back pocket. Edwards the flyer. Turner has his issues. Swans will clear. Ball will sit on the wing. Jones will compete. He's up against might have been Howard there for the Swans on the outer side of the ground. In fact, that's McLaughlin, who's the recipient of the free kick. So a little bit of overzealous, zealous, I should say, tackling there from Jones. So McLaughlin, his kick, just puts it on the head there of Chelcraft, who's good enough to take the mark overhead. What's his options look like in board? He's got Rokar essentially by himself, still in space. Chelcraft will go back. And he'll pick out Bryce Watson. Watson back in board to Tony Knott. Already featured with a massive mark from third deep. In this quarter, which has been a highlight, goes to Erseg. Erseg with a little ball there to Pina. Travel the required 15 metres. Pina, who's played on a wing predominantly. A little bit of time in the midfield. Comes back in board. Might be Tester. It is Lewis Tester. Been a good player. Tester with his kick. Comes out wide to Lynch. Plenty of East Perth jumpers in front of Lynch. Short ball. Rokar had his name written all over that. Literally goes to the point of the boundary line. And another kick inside, which came off the boot there of Shellcraft, getting another possession. Slick by foot, and Cartwright was on the end of it. Cartwright. Had a good day at the office. Got some timely possessions. Just kicked a couple of goals. Being a good player. At the 12 disposals, going for distance with the right foot kick, drags it left through for a behind. So the Swans will tick it over to 9 10 64. They've got within two points of East Perth. East Perth lead 10 6 66. Ball at half back. East Perth was in the hands of Schofield. Here's a turnover. Swan Districts have their problems though. The man that was tackled there was Lynch. The free kick has been won. The East Perth looking clear. Oh, well, they look like they were going to clear, but it's been cut off quite magnificently there by Pacini, who comes back in board and finds Lynch, who was involved in that previous tackle. And the Royals look to depart from their defensive 50. The original target there was McCready. Didn't necessarily lose it in the sun. He was just outclassed by Pacini. They took it and quickly by foot. Got it back in board to find Lynch. So Lynch fancies himself. We'll have to kick from the chalk of 50. Maybe 48 to 49 metres. Tired legs. Leverton a three-quarter minutes into the third turn. The right foot kick was a tired kick as it got the journey nearly on the boundary line. Or the goal line, I should say. Through for a rush behind. It was touched. Another opportunity for Swans. East Perth's defence standing up. 
Game almost squared up. There's a point in it. Right with a thumpy kick. Beautiful skills. Lands on the chest there of Saunders. Saunders by hand. Overzealous hand pass. Went past North. Inside 50 chance now for Clark. Usually very good by foot. Oh, spilt there by Coleman. Usually would absolutely swallow those. And as a result in Schofield having his own set of problems on the outer half forward flank. Picked up by Reedy who nursed it magnificently back inside 50. And the mark taken there by Jackson McLaughlin. Swans have just owned this last five minutes. Ball hasn't been able to get past the centre wing for East Perth. But in doing so, hasn't been able to really make East Perth pay. McLaughlin. League footy. 35 out directly in front. Should be able to put this through. His approach is very good and he's missed. Nine twelve. So to put it in to perspective, Swans have started this quarter with four behinds and have let East Perth off the hook. Stanley Wright with his kick from defence. It'll be a free kick to Swan Districts as it cleared the boundary. No one touched it. So Tony not be able to bring it back in. So four gettable goals for Swan Districts have gone astray. East Perth yet to add to their scoreline, not to Turner. Turner does have an option inside, chooses to ignore that in Clark. Goes to play on, thumping looking kick. A very good mark taken defensively there by Nick Robertson. Robertson to Rakos. Rakos with his kick, got on with it, finds McCready. It was named at Sinath back today. McCready with his kick. Right working very hard and a brilliant mark. Absolutely brilliant. Just inside the talk of 50. There's like a thick outside edge and taken at gully. And right with all this athleticism on display there. Good kick to Rakos has worked hard from half back. Now this will be an inside 50 that can hurt the Swans. Remember, Swans have kicked four consecutive behinds. East Perth, their first genuine inside 50. The target was Medhat. Tried to use the body. Ball off hands. will be thrown in the right forward pocket some 25 metres around from East Perth's goal. So Murphy should, Murphy's law suggests that East Perth should kick a goal here for the way football and the gods usually act. Swan Districts have to be careful. The Royals have to take care of their opportunities. Rokar by hand. Shellcraft. Turner. Experienced. Polished. He brings the ball back to centre half back and finds Hewitt, who's just got better and better as the game goes on. Knott's kick. And a very good mark. Cartwright again. Been a star inside 50. Coleman, the suggested target, falls to Smith, the big fella, as he nimble enough. Did okay there, behind, just below the uh, the waistline. Did all right to hold player, escorted it back over the line, and there'll be a throw in. And all of a sudden, it was in East Perth forward line seconds ago. And now we're deep in the left forward pocket for Swans, who are back in to attack again. No one going with Brayshaw at the front of this contest. We're talking about the Sando, the medalist. In 23, standing by himself. Not was he held. Umpire said play on. Watson, only has to be sharp by foot, is not. Hammered by Schumacher back into space. Rokar and Pina, Reedy floating around the ball. Schumacher just hacks it forward. Bounce is going to play a big part. The Swan Districts have got enough through Watson to go back with the flight and take the mark. Bryce Watson, been a good player. Turner just racking up when he appealed. So too is Shellcraft. Bassini. Coleman. Can't mark. Was he in French? Can't ride around this ball. Can't ride together. 
around a couple of Royals defenders, if you don't mind. Shot on goal. Not the desired result. Always about a 30 to 40% chance of kicking a goal like that. But again, creating 0-5 to start this third quarter for Swan Districts. East Perth have been very fortunate. Is the damn wall going to break, though, at some stage? As they struggle to bring the ball inside their own 50. That being East Perth. Amadjuri, long way down from half forward. Comes back in board. Brayshaw just asks his charges just to settle things. His kick is a good one. And Raikos has the ball still a long way from goal in between the eastern centre wing and left half forward. Raikos, Schofield, nice lead. Schofield, still 60 to 65 from goal. It was a push, you would have thought, in defence. That boy didn't pick it up. Alex Howard was too smart. The Swans should clear from their back pocket. Edwards playing in front, takes the mark at half back, just inside the line. The locals aren't so happy with that. Blakely is a recipient of a good kick back in board there by Edwards. Blakely goes looking for Reedy and almost has to pull in the one hander. And there will be a throw in right in front of their broadcast position. Smack bang on centre wing. Beautiful afternoon for football and a humid day. About 32 degrees, East Perth lead. In fact, trail 10 6 66 to Swan District, 9 13 67. Turner was set upon there by Crowden. Falls to ground, Brayshaw gathers. Umpire's whistle has seen Turner. Received the free kick. East Perth will have to be careful. Must give it back on the full or it'll be paid as a 50. Jesse Turner, an inspiration for Swans this afternoon. Goes back to Howard, who again is another player that's just getting better and better. Has not sure if he wants him. This goes back to the ever-reliable skipper in Turner. Must be nearing 30 possessions already. At 21 to the half. This ball. His kick, in fact, went looking for Lynch. Lynch has given away a free kick. Wilcox is the recipient of a free kick at half back. To the jeers of the East Perth local crowd. Wilcox. 45 metres of travel. Howard gave it up. Here's then the jury, usually very clever by foot, comes back in board. And the mark taken here by Hill. Hill wants to play on, goes to Brayshaw. Only required 15 metres. And Brayshaw again goes with his kick. Clever ball. Good ball movement. And the Royals midfield just settled then. And the jury was good. And Rakos was on the end of it. Takes an easy mark. You can see that the Swan District's defence, along with East Perth, getting tired. 32 degrees, it's got to take it out of you. At any line of sport. Huge kick for East Perth. Wouldn't this be a dagger in the heart of the Swan Districts after kicking five consecutive behinds? Rakos never really looked like it. It made the distance, or is it ricocheted onto the Behind post, and there will be that. Tony Knott will be the recipient of the kick from the back pocket. Swans clinging to a one point lead. 21 and a half minutes played, third term. Waffle footy round two with Dan Hobley, the broadcast, of course, live on the AFL app. Crowden plays on. Brayshaw, good enough to pick it up on the half volley. Goes with his kick in board. Should be able to pick out a target. He does. Shane Hilly. Well, they're all queuing up, really, in that forward pocket. And Hilly has been quite troublesome for Swan's defence. Just has the ability just to 
play his role. Little mosquito down the fourth pocket and do his job. Come on, Robbo! Again, another big kick in the contest. Hilly. Kick on goal. It happens all the time. You don't take your opportunities at any level of sport. You'll get nailed to the wall. All the hard work from Swan Districts as they've coughed up five behinds and East Perth have gone down the other lead and have kicked a major. You see it every day of the week. East Perth, 11-6, 72. Haven't had the ball inside 50 all that much. But the clever movement there from Brayshaw, just some poise from Hilly. And he makes Swan Districts pay. Been the theme of the day. The Royals snatch back the lead. Good game of footy, 11-6-72. Swan Districts 9-13-67. 23 minutes played, third term. Live action, the waffle, round two. Been a cracking contest. Either side won't go away. You'd suggest there's probably only going to be one to two kicks in it, whoever wins. The gauntlet thrown back into the Swan Districts. Can they return serve? Blakely and Jones continue the absorbing battle. Shellcraft gets another possession. Him and Turner have been absolutely outstanding. Over the running, the footy there was Bassini. Turner, followed by Brayshaw. Cipro just hacks the ball forward. Colwyn being quiet. They need a goal out of him. Mentioned at the start of the broadcast, if you could get four out of Colwyn, you'd suggest that the Swans would give themselves every chance of winning it. At the moment, he has two to his name. Needs supply though. Kick across the face. North the flyer. Cartwright at the feet of the ball. Hand pass shoveled out. Here's an opportunity. Off the boot. And a behind. Hewitt was the kicker at goal. Had to be quick and very nilly. Kick that goal that the Swans were desperate for. Six consecutive behind scored. Shot was taken with 12 metres out directly in front. Under a lot of pressure though. Six behind for Swans. One straight added by Royals. That being East Perth. Jones again the target. And he's been infringed. Good decision there from the umpire. And East Perth can reload from half back. Where's the movement coming for East Perth? Virtually it does. Comes through the goal kicker there in Shane Hilly. He's led up from his half full position to take the ball on the wing. High ball, plenty of players around it. One of them is not. Loading around it is Lynch. Schofield getting busy there for East Perth, taking the ground. Now the tower on top of that. Ball out, stoppage just inside the chalk out there on the eastern wing. Blakely. Back forward there by Van Diemen. Travelled, it's required 20 minutes. Going back to Hilly. Gave the hand pass off. Van Diemen shot on goal. He's through for a behind. Likely movement though, and some good traction. And that forward thrust there from Van Diemen and Hilly, who combined almost for a great goal in that left forward pocket. The Swans dodge a bullet. Cleared from full back. Not the target. Get back inside 50 from Sturrock, and a good mark taken in defence. Again, Turner. Took the mark, but there has been an infringement. And Schumacher is a recipient of the free kick. East Perth, you'd suggest, need to clear this forward line out. No choice does Schumacher have, but just to go to the top of the goal square. And a big mark taken by Medhat. Remarkably. Going back to kick his fourth. Small of stature. Big heart though. Good set of hands. Kenny kick his fourth. 
15 out, directly in front, should make no mistake, and does it. East Perth get a little break. They've kicked accurately this quarter. They've contributed two goals, one. Medhat has gone to four goals. The leading multiple goal scorer on the ground. Swans have paid the price for the ultimate cardinal sin. They've gone inside 50 plenty of times for six behinds. Three out of those six have probably been inside 35 to 40 metres out directly in front, which they've missed. And the Royals gone inside 50 probably five times. Hit two goals, one. Bed Hat has four. But it's a superb day for him. His 44th waffle game. Looks like McLaughlin's been moved into that midfield. And on the stroke of three-quarter time after that Stanley Wright completed mark at centre half back, we have an assignment for Swan Districts with East Perth kicking a goal late through Medhat to lead at three-quarter time. At lead of a level 12-7, 79. Swan Districts 9-14, 68. An 11-point lead to East Perth. Swan Districts with some work ahead. Some goal kickers to three-quarter time. The Swans, Cartwright with a couple, Coleman two and Reedy with two, singles to Clark, Edwards and McLaughlin. And of course, for the Royals, as we mentioned, the previous goal kicker there, Medhat four, Tedesco three, Crowden two, and singles to Hill, Raycos and Scott. You are live on the AFL app. It's superb to have your company this afternoon. Dan Hobley with you on afl.com.au. Cracking last quarter ahead here at Leaderville Oval. It's East Perth by 11 points at three quarter time. Back in a few moments. This waffle stream is brought to you by Maxis Tires. Performance when it's wanted, safety when it's needed. At Truck Assist, we only cover one thing. Specifically, trucks for landscaping, trucks for cabinet making, bed trucks, mm, smell that bread truck, trucks for chippies, ones for brickies. Oh, and really big vans. We get your business sorted. With Roadside Assist, if your battery says nope, Downtime cover if this is your only hope. And motor cover if things don't go to plan. That's insurance from the specialists. Truck Assist, it's what we do. Maxis Tyres. From an impressive heritage, tyres that deliver safety and performance on and off-road. Maxis Tyres. Performance when it's wanted, safety when it's needed. Punt from 50, win. Little too into the game, win. Too cocky, meh, almost a win. Risking it all for the glory, win. It's win-win at the Waffle. Great footy, food and entertainment. Find out more at waffle.com.au. Hi, Shell. Shell has high blood pressure and the rising cost of living certainly doesn't help. Annie manages her diabetes with good nutrition, but fresh fruit and veg prices keep rising. And Jack has high cholesterol, but nothing is higher than his pet bills. That's why they save more money every year by getting their prescriptions from Chemist Warehouse. And you will too. Head online or look for our price list in store to see how much you'll save. Chemist Warehouse, discounting prescriptions every day. I love a sunburnt country. A land of sweeping plains. Of ragged mountain ranges. Of drought and flooding rains. When the lucky country isn't so lucky. Lucky you're with Amy. The stadium is the host. Draw the battle lines. 
You acknowledge your opponent on the field and in the stands. You hear that deafening chant. It's sometimes just one among the many. It's them that unites us. Bring them on. This waffle stream is brought to you by Truck Assist. Insurance to keep on earning. Plenty to think about here for Swan Districts at three quarter time. Welcome back, Dan Hobley, with you on the broadcast afl.com.au live on the AFL app. We see Swan Districts at three quarter time. Trail 9 14 68 to East Perth 12 7 79. Both sides in their huddles at the moment and some direction from their line coaches and obviously their main coach, and of course. Their coach, Ross McQueen, that being for East Perth, must be breathing a sigh of relief. The third quarter saw the Swan Districts really be wasteful in front of goal. Kick six consecutive behinds uh, with the Royals kicking two goals. One, the Old Murphy's Law stinging Swan Districts hard. As you've seen, East Perth break away with an 11-point lead. Speaking of breaking away, the huddle has emerged. Coach is returning to where they need to be, supporters making their way off the ground. The Swan District's a similar picture to the left of our broadcast. Wonderful to see for the Waffle Wonderland with plenty of kids, boys and girls having a kick on the field. That is the beauty of the Waffle. You can go out to the huddle and also have a kick on the hello turf here of Leaderville Oval. So it's just a great thing for footy and local footies well and truly alive and well within the Waffle W and of course the men's Waffle League seniors. So the assignment is there for Swan Districts, and I imagine their coach in Andrew Prune would have had plenty to say. Of course, Mark Poyani, David McQuire, their assistant coaches at Swan Districts, they would have had plenty to say at three-quarter time, but it probably would have been, the main message would have been, defensively, they have been very good, but they need some more pressure. If the ball's heading not in their direction, with their midfielders just to stand up, Guard some space because East Perth at times got the ball inside 50 and just had numbers everywhere. The midfielders standing by themselves. Hamish Brayshaw, probably three or four times I outlined in that quarter, he stood by himself. So they need to just be less 50 50 and more one on one. May have been the suggestion from their senior coach, but goals are going to do the job. It's been the goal kicking end has the city end of the ground at times. Smith to start the ruck, so it suggests that Blakely, that being Nathan Blakely, is just going to have a rest for the time being and reload. Smith certainly been serviceable. Be up against the giant in Scott Jones. Jones wins that tap. Hacked out of the pack there by McLaughlin, who's been accustomed to the midfield. inside 50 for Swan Districts. Came off the boot there of Jesse Turner. And a good mark going back with the flight. Looks to me like it might be Edwards on the outer left half forward flank. Hasn't he been a good player today? Has Edwards. Good by foot. Just likes to bring others into the game. Be sharp around goals. Probably could have had three or four goals today. Unselfish at times. If ever Swans needed a goal, it's absolutely now. In the opening minutes of the last quarter, Edwards with his kick across the face. There's always going to be a tough kick, and he's popped it through. Hasn't he jailed that? How football must work. You can have six consecutive behinds. You can have Swan Districts players of ilk missing the ball 35 metres out in front of goal, and then you can have Edwards hemmed up in that left half forward flank, probably one of the toughest spots to kick a goal, but he floats it through. Massive. Trims the margin to five points. East Perth lead 12-7-79. Swan Districts make a big statement. Early stages, a minute 30 in, final term. 10-14-74, they trail by five points. What a brilliant finish there by Edwards.
Edwards joins a string of four players with a couple of goals for multiples. Cartwright two, Edwards now two, Coleman and Reedy. Jones rucks the ball, clears the ball, done it all. Not hits the handball back from his bits, clears with his kick. Goes towards the boundary line. Now the screen will be from East Perth. Was it deliberate? And the umpire has paid deliberate. Don't know if I agree with that. But that's the modern game. Kick back inside to Desco. Came off the boot there of Rakos. To Desco. Been deadly by foot. Long kick. Lovely ball. Absolutely magnificent kick. Finds, guess who? Medhat. He's kicked four, kicked one late in the third quarter, should be able to go around on the right boot and put through his fifth. This boy will be in the votes this afternoon, surely. Medhat, three steps around the body, has kicked his fifth, you would suggest. Has done so. Proving to be the match winner is Tom Medhat. His fifth goal, and it's turned into a day out. We're only three minutes into the last. You could end up with six or seven yet. Haven't necessarily had a match-up. Swans in defence for Medhat. Floated in between that full forward line and half forward. But been more than a thorn in the side. He's been a dagger in the side of Swan Districts. Five goals any day of the week. Fantastic outing. Jones again dominant in the middle of the ground. Just the little nuances of Brayshaw lurking around has been the little differences for East Perth just to keep themselves out of trouble. Just doing enough for East Perth. Then Swan District respond. Smith by hand, a clearance for East uh, for Swan Districts, I should say. Edwards from the back. Balls to McLaughlin. In fact, that was Cartwright, who's taken to ground. All wrapped up. Just have to be careful here. In fact, that was McLaughlin. Taken to ground, the umpires need to be strong here. Need to tell the players to get on with it. Crowd and just uses his body and size. Van Diemen overran it, hasn't had the best day. Tedesco again involved, back to Jones, who's been superb. Now to Hill, they're running, Emma Jury. By hand to Brayshaw, starting to really open up here for the Royals. Kick over the top, Emma Jury should snap around the body if you can settle. Goes back by hand. Probably had no real choice for the result. Schofield snaps around the body. Through for A behind. Did it, the Royals butcher that. But again, the movement of Brayshaw, effective there for East Perth, and they cut open the Swans in swades. Oh, the turnover from Blakely Jones. It's a gift. you got to feel for Blakely. Has worked his backside off all afternoon. Senior player, turns it over, critical stage. Gives it, gives it back to the opposition, Ruckman, who really... Gave Hill an option to have a lick of the ice cream and really it should have been a clearing kick. Zach Hill, named it full forward, has floated across half forward, has been down as far as half back at times. Hill never looked like it. Just kicked it off the instep. It was a real backyard kick to your cousin. Just the other side of cricket season. Nothing too convincing about it with respect. Tedesco, though, pretty keen to get East Perth back in the frame. And the ball has been marked in the pocket. Randall is in the hands of Randall. He's in a tough pocket. In between the left forward pocket, left half forward. Now going off the kick of Edwards down the opposite end of the ground. Anything could happen here. Going to go to the check side. All about the purchase. Has he kicked the goal? He says to Edwards, I'll match you 
every step of the way. That has to be better. How's the party trick? Randall, pitcher, how tough this kick is. You've got to get the execution after running off your line for three metres. And he punched it through with the right foot. Check side, banana, whatever you want to call it, this side of the border. Massive goal. How deflating it must be for the Black Ducks. And they look at that scoreboard and it's getting away from them. Probably the first time today. They trail 10 14 74. East Perth 14 9 93. And this is where the old devil jumps on the shoulder and it says to you, Can we come back? Have we got the juice? That's the question being asked to Swans. Seven minutes played, final term. Blakely, Rokar's in the middle of the ground. Almost a throw. The goal kicker there in Randall. Gives it back. I mean Saunders. East Perth have just completely flipped this game on its lid. Comes to Emma Jury. Hasn't done a great deal. Goes back by hand. Searching by Raycos. Raycos with his kick. And guess who? Tedesco. Now, Tedesco is a wonderful kick. Distance won't be an issue. The way they're going for kicking on goal, why not have a shot? The Swans have been taught a lesson. Take your opportunities. We'll be on the end of eating some dirt. Tedesco, not the greatest of kicks, still an opportunity for a mark in defence of 50. Tony Knott, I thought had plenty of that. Not paid, cleared by Tester. Can't call that deliberate. Uh, that's an ordinary decision. You've got to back the umpires in every week, and we appreciate them, but that wasn't deliberate in my book. Tester, hard done by it. East Perth to bring the ball back in for a certain inside 50. Oh, well. This goes to show you don't get ahead of yourself, including commentators. Clark chopped it off, gave it to Coleman. Coleman has no real choice but to give it by hand. Did so. Sold Cipro into a world of hurt. Shellcraft for the kick, not the convincing kick that he was looking for. The mark taken by Cartwright. Cartwright. There's one short in the middle. Watson spilt the kick. He was worried out of it there by... Jones, Brayshaw by hand to Van Diemen. Van Diemen, beautiful kick. Hill on the burst. In fact, the Schofield back with the flight and takes it on the chest. And you would suggest that looking around at the Swan District's body language, if Schofield bangs his throat, going to be a tough road trip back for the Swans. At times, they've been in control, Swans. But East Perth have got them with the basics. Transfer of ball movement and just getting it between the big sticks. Wasteful day for Swans. What could have been? Yes! Skyfield over the umpire's hat, bangs it through. Starting to sting now for Swans. East Perth galloping away with this 15 9, 99. Swan Districts 10 14 74. Haven't given up the ghost by any imagination, but 25 points is the margin. And it's going to take something phenomenal from Swan Districts to get back from here. They'll have to kick five consecutive goals. And it's going to have to come from the place of miracles. East Perth are in control completely. And it's been the level up of Jones. It's been just his influence. It's been the little possessions there from Brayshaw. It's been the emergence of Emma Jury, who hasn't done a great deal. It's been the class of Tedesco. And not to mention Randall, that goal in the pocket. Speaking of which, Randall at the foot of this pack. Swans with no choice, got to continue to work hard. Turnover at half back wasn't great either from Blakely. Takes that ball. Free kick here for East Perth, you would suggest. The umpire, it might have been right, it was in there. It's at the bottom of the pack. 
Verging from the base of it. Angus Scott. So, Jones infringing there with the knee. Into the path there of McLaughlin. McLaughlin will be pretty keen to play on. Has to move the ball quick. Dummies his opponent. McLaughlin outside of the boot makes it very hard for Coleman. Almost pulled the mark in. Ready at the back of the pack. Has he got it on the boot? He has. Making something out of nothing is Will Reedy. And Swans get one back. The delivery inside the forward line was creative at best. McLaughlin took him on. Coleman offered him something. Reedy, they one of their better players all day around goal. Gets the finish through pure core strength. He got it on the boot. Funny things have happened. 19 points is the margin. Swan Districts respond finally. 11, 14, 80. East Perth, 15, 9, 99. Game on. Reedy with three goals to Swan Districts, leading the way on the goal kicking sheet. East Romandal and other games. Give that score update in a minute as Jones, a probing kick. And Tedesco pulls in a very fine mark. 35 metres out directly in front. Again, Jones. And close to the best player in the ground for East Perth. Comes to the bench for a well uh, rest. Tedesco should finish these fine work. Tedesco with his kick. Has he got the journey? He has. Four goals to Tedesco. Medhat's been the star with five, but Tedesco's been just as important. Just his possessions, his elite foot skills, have brought his teammates into it. And every time he's been around goal, he's hurt the Swans on every occasion. He's Perth to 16, 9, 105. Margin back out to 25 points. Swan Districts 11, 14, 80. And they're back where they want to be. East Perth, and that's where breathing space lives. They've got that with a 25 point lead. An unusual forward line makeup for the Royals. No real massive key forward. Tedesco with a bit of size, but there's a lot of fleet of foot down there. A couple of mosquitoes, smaller players. Ned Hat's only a slight fellow, kicked five, so no real dominant key forward down there. They've still managed to kick nine goals between them today, so go figure, and congratulations to them. It's a forward line that they make work. And midfield's the one that's spoken about a lot. Think of Schumacher, Crowder, Brayshaw. Think of blokes like Michael Randall. Plenty of options through there. Speaking of which, it comes to the back of the pack. Angus Scott's another option. Ball goes inside 50, not. There's a weight to the fact that there was going to be a shove out here by Schofield. Schofield around the body has missed. Did he have options inside? I think Emin Dury was potentially by himself. Tedesco was lurking, but chose to have the right foot snap across the face. That's the luxury of having a 26-point lead to your name. Turner receives the kick in. Not by hand. Out there to Cipro, who eventually boom a kick inside the forward line. Edwards has some time, some space, has been very good all day to manufacture goal kicking opportunities, but it floats across the face. The right hand side kicking down the city end, looking back towards the skyscraper of Perth. Beautiful afternoon. April in Perth, gotta love it. Need a bit of rain eventually though, dries a chip. East Perth to clear in the hands there of Van Diemen. Tackle applied. Turner just continues to try hard as a skipper and wraps up his opposition there in kill by the look of it. It's a long way down from full forward, but that again is the modern game. Not a great deal happened out of that passage of play. East Perth is screaming for the free kick. Sturrock has almost made his own decision ahead of the umpire. Said, I'm having that. 
goes back to right right just a wonderful kick what an asset to have in your own side almost overcooked that he did in the end mark the spill turn up was going to go by hand edwards was he pushed out of it good contest between him and wilcox wilcox been a good player and back to Sturrock. Bestley went looking for Randall, but found Hill. And Hill by foot has spotted up Brayshaw, who's been good. Brayshaw with his kick. Out to half forward, Shane Hilly. That's a long way down from left half forward position. Between that centre wing and left half forward. Nurses are back over the boundary line. He's claimed a kick out of all that. The umpire's given him one, so Hilly. Long to full forward. Watch for Tedesco at the back of the pack. Almost a mark pulled down by Schofield across the face. Swans have the numbers. Not was good enough in defence. There's Turner again. Just been a wonderful player for Swans this afternoon. Cipro. Guns back in board to Lynch. Lynch. To Clark. Not the best of hand passes. Reedy good enough to mop up the mess. Kicks over. It was fatigue kick over the top there of... Turner. Turner to Hewitt and Hewitt just outside the chalk will give it up and it'll be out of bounds on the full. Robertson will be the recipient of the free kick. Has Crowden short if he wants. He ignores that. Factoring in final quarter. Plenty of fatigue. Hot day. 18 and a half minutes played. You do the maths. A lot of tired players out there. From fullback. Well, then McCready, he just peeled the ball away. This kick to find Angus Scott. Scott's kicked it on. He'll get it back. Good running there from Angus Scott, involved in the last couple of possessions. Comes back in board. Spots up Saunders. Done his job today. Not a headline player, but has just done his job. Cross half back. Usually reliable by foot. Went looking for Brayshaw. Can he keep it in? Umpire's not going to fall for that one. Brayshaw did try to peel away. Pulled the wool over the umpire's eyes. Boundary umpire was onto it. We had throw in on that eastern centre wing. Game certainly gone into going through the motions phase. Smith being gallant against the powerful Jones, who's just a giant of a ruckman. Why don't you give the sand over a push this year, Jones? It's just been dominant again today. Bit of Zach Clark about him. A rare inside 50 potentially here for Swans, but quickly mopped up. They raffled it, did Robertson, who went back to Raycos, who's peeled the ball. And will get it back. Robertson, that is, at half back. Robertson short to Crowden. Crowden, he's a left footer. Hill with the simple possession on the centre wing by himself. Goes by foot. Rakos again just lopes to 50. Should be a result mark here for East Perth off hands. Schofield appealing for a hole on his teammate. Has the umpire made a decision on that? No. Medcat not getting a free kick. There'll be a throw in deep into the right forward pocket. East Perth in attack. Pick under 20 minute, 21 minutes played. East Perth in control. Kill. Rokor. Edwards. Just the game. Brilliant reading of the footy. Just kept his eye on it. Read it like a bull. And takes the ball at half back. Looks to have done a little bit of jarring to his ankle. Goes short. Turner again. Really made a mistake. Just got no one to give it to. Eventually goes in board. Got a couple of options out here. Collins is one of those. McLaughlin will run on. Been a good player for Swans. Plenty to like. His delivery to Coleman was there, but so was the fist. Brilliant defence there for the East Perth defence there of Harrison McCready. A fine player, and he's done a fine job on Coleman. Something for Swans to think about going forward. How's their forward line going to set up? Not to say they relied on one of them. Coleman has certainly been isolated today at full forward.
still contributed a couple of goals though, Coleman. So certainly not disgraced today. Smith. And he's tapped down. Greedy, the ever present. Getting up off the deck there is Crowden. And they'll go again. Ball at right half forward, 55 from goal. Being from Swan's goal, Brayshaw had a fresh airy. Reedy again involved. Kick was poked out of the pack there by North. Goes to the boundary line. Arpai's happy with that. East Perth gain 15 metres. We'll have a throw in just to the right of our commentary position. Which we'll see a close up of Jones who wins the tap quite easily. Shellcraft. Surely a free kick. It was Crowd and it was in the back. Swans through McFarlane. Edwards, was he tunnelled out of that? Stanley Wright, he well in defence. Just escorts it back over the boundary line. Another stoppage and a throw in at right half forward. 50 metres around from the Swans goal. They trail 11 15 81 to East Perth 16 10. 106. Crowden tried to bustle his way through. Brayshaw, under some pressure, just had to get the kick hacked forward. Watson went through his legs over the boundary line. And uh, another throw in. Other scores for round two. Just an update. The Shark 17 7, well and truly in control of Claremont 5 8 38. That's in the final quarter at Revo Fitness Stadium and it's West Perth who continue to march all over Perth 10-5 to Perth 4-4-28 for South Fremantle very dominant 22-11 earlier today defeating West Coast 8-7-55 tomorrow's game Subiaco will take on Peel both sides will fancy themselves tomorrow both got impressive lists but, uh, should be a very very good contest for Sunday football right here on the waffle for round two. Not has his issues. Lead there by Pina for the moment. Give me another turnover. Van Diemen. Now back to Randall. Randall to Emmanjuri. Back to Brayshaw. Just a tunnelling ball. Bit of a finger breaker. Schofield manufactures the soccer off the ground. Gets the congratulations there from Brayshaw. Just a mongrel kick there from Brayshaw. Schofield, very agriculture with the old hack forward. When you're on, you're on. And it landed in the midst there of Zachary Hill. <laughs> Hedrill, I should say. Hill listed to play for Federals. That could mean anything across the state. A number of clubs with a Federals tag. Doesn't matter though. They'll be proud of that, the Federals footy club, because he smacks it through for another one. East Perth been in control for probably 15 minutes. But they're well and truly going to cruise away with a little bit of percentage at this stage. 17, 10, 112. Swans 11, 15, 81. A couple of Swan supporters starting to vacate for the drive back to Bassendine and Guildford. Their club was pretty good for three quarters, just have lost their way. Really have lost their way from those six consecutive behinds. They've never really recovered from that, where they had the opportunity to blow the game apart and haven't been able to do anything really since half time. Trailing 9, 8 to 10, 6 at half time, and they've added for the second half 2 7. It's pretty staggering for Swans on a dry day. It's not wet. Just haven't been able to be sharp around goal. Nearly 27 minutes gone. Brayshaw again. His kick out in front of the goal kicker there. In fact, that's Medhat, who just shows a turn of speed. The kick on its way. Schofield will set himself. Brilliant defence there from Collins, getting the fist on the, the pill as he hammers it through. Textbook defence. 
Pina from fullback. Turner marks in the shadows of Leader Valival in the back pocket. Must have had close to 40. We'll have to have a look at these possessions. We're definitely high 30s. In fact, that was his literally his 40th possession on the dot. We'll have ticked over to 41. East Perth through the agency there of Sturrup. Go back inside 50. Pena around this football for Swan Districts. Emma Jury with a hand pass. A kick on goal there from Medat. Brilliant hand pass there from Emma Jury. What a day for Tom Medhat. Sorrento Duncraig, junior footy club many years ago. Has kicked his sixth. But it's something else. Just hasn't wasted opportunities. Whenever he's been near and around goal, he's made Swans pay. Emma Jury put him under the pump with a hand pass. Tied Swans defence were no match. And they've added their 18th goal. And he's kicked six of those. 18-11, 119. Swans, 11-15, 81. Not long to go in this one. Tick under 29 minutes played. First uh, final quarter, I should say. Crowden gets a clearance. Starrock goes out to the talented Randall. To Crowden. Another possession. Always picked up something out of that. So it's going to come back. And it will be taken there by Randall on the eastern centre wing. Randall with his kick. A low ball and finds Hilly. Very serviceable today. In front of goal and around the ground across half forward. There's one for the high flyers. Collins should be in best position. Him and not spoil each other. So lack some talk. Shellcraft. We've fallen away a little bit this last quarter and a half, but still been very good. Watson under all sorts of pressure. So too Collins. Tried hard. Tackled by a couple of forwards there. One of those being Emma Jury. Another being the chief goal kicker there in Medhat, who's kicked six. Could he kick a seventh? Does the right work. That's probably not going to get you too many goals. Ruck and Rove. Clearing ball. Edwards to fly. Almost pulled in the mark. I think he has pulled it in. The umpire has rewarded it. Fantastic mark there from Edwards. You'd like to see him move the ball quickly. Edwards to Cartwright. Cartwright has to go back because no one's forward of the footy. Rokor almost caught the fist there of Jones. Back to Edwards. Another possession. Beautiful kick out to McLaughlin. McLaughlin usually very good by foot. Has Reedy floating across. Goes with his kick. Coleman, a rare opportunity to mark inside the forward line. Punched away. McCready. Certainly has served up a lesson in the last two and a half quarters at fullback. In fairness to Coleman, delivery at times has been questionable. And that kick was virtually on his head for a key forward. Makes it tough. Blakely. Snap it around the body there from Roka. Through for a behind. Could be the final score for Swans for the game. This last quarter. On 31 minutes. Schofield a long way down from the forward line. At half back for East Perth. Mitch Schofield. Long ball. Good mark. Watson just read it better. And Majuri, he certainly won that battle. And Majuri. Of course, pretty good last week, been pretty quiet today. Go forward through Ursek, who's been a handy inclusion today. Done his best to cross the back line, the left footer. And we've done the throw in some 35 metres around between left forward pocket, left half forward, probably more left half forward. 
Plenty of tired players. Jones again. Gets a nice little consolation here for East Perth. Just to clear. The final score, East Perth run away with it. In the end, 18-11. 119 over Swan Districts, very convincing winners in the end, 11, 16, 82. So a fine win there from East Perth. They certainly dominated the second half. If you're just joining us on the broadcast, if you've been following along at halftime, it was the Royals 10-6, led Swan District 9 goals, 8 after a pretty good first quarter of football. It was the third quarter where Swan Districts fell away and blew the game, really. They kicked six consecutive behinds. The Royals got out to a lead at three-quarter time, 12-7 to 9-14. And then in the final turn, it was the Royals who dominated, kicking six goals, four, to the Swans, who kicked two goals, two. That was the game sequence. Let's go through the goal kickers. Medhat for East Perth was superb, kicking six goals. Tedesco was very good with four. Crowd and kick two. Singles to Hill, Hilly, Randall, Raycos, Schofield and Scott. And for Swan Districts, Reedy was a very good player with three. Cartwright kicked two. Uh, multiple goals there to Edwards. Coleman who kicked a couple. Very quiet in the last sort of two and a half quarters. Clark is a goal kicker. And Young McLaughlin also played very well for Swan Districts. The key stat winners for Swan Districts, well, leading the way was Jesse Turner, who was superb with 43 touches. Josh Shellcraft. Certainly a player of the future with 37 possessions. For East Perth, Brayshaw tried hard, of course, and led the way, did what he had to do with 32 possessions. But I think a better player would have been probably the likes of Mitch Crowd. There was a little bit more damaging around the ground. But Brayshaw uh, needs credit for his last quarter and a half. He certainly straightened East Perth up. So they were the noticeable possession winners across the ground. For result-wise, it's the Sharks who have a massive lead over Claremont. 21 goals, 9 over Claremont, 6 goals, 8 in the twilight of that game. And as we've seen, East Perth, the big winners over Swan Districts today. That wraps things up here at Leaderville Oval. Been a pleasure to bring you the broadcast. My name is Dan Hobley. It has all been thanks to the AFL app, of course, afl.com.au. Football continues tomorrow in the waffle for round two. It's going to be Subiaco and Peel Thunder. Should be a cracking contest. It's uh, here at Leaderville Oval. Kicks off at 10 past two. Get down if you can. Been great to bring you the coverage this afternoon. Stay well. We'll catch you next week for round three football action on the AFL app, afl.com.au. Bidding you a great evening.